All right. Open your Bibles, please, to Genesis chapter 6. And boy, we have a subject to share with you. Uh, we're kind of continuing from the days of Noah, living in the days of Lot and Noah. And like it or not, we're surrounded with a lot of things that are going on. And God wants us, I believe, to have eyes to see and ears to hear so that we're not deceived with the world and the enemy is going to deceive the nations by his pharmakia, as we know as sorcery. But here in Genesis chapter 6, in verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. This is why the flood came, is because there was so much wickedness, there was so much violence, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. And then he goes on, it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And it says here that Noah walked with the Lord. And the earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And we know that the Bible says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be before the Son of Man cometh back. And so we're seeing that this is the wickedness of man. The Bible talks about in Romans 1, the reprobate of mind. And we're seeing a lot of this and we didn't realize that <laughs> these reprobates are ruling the world, really. And yet the Bible's clear that this is what's gonna happen in the end time. So. Today I wanted to talk about androgyny. What we're facing, what's happening to our, <laughs> what we're happening with our children. And this is an educational video. This is not to bash or destroy, but I think people need to know what's really going on. And the Bible is so true. And that's why he put the Old Testament in there to let us see that this is not new. As in the days of Noah, so we see that these things have never really totally went away, but they've been in secret. Yeah. In the secret religions, the mystery religions, and now they're lifting the veil. Yeah. They're lifting the veil, and they're actually now coming out and being so bold with it. And so we need to know what this really is, what's really going on. So um, at the Oscars in 2020, the Academy Awards announcers said, Bow before your gods, Babylon. And all the people that had Oscars and all the people there, they all started clapping. And it was just like, wow, they're all in on it. <laughs> they're all in on it. They're all part of the club, and we're not. Now, <laughs> no, Babylon, I'm going to put my glasses on. I put Babylon meaning gate of the gods. So he says, uh, Bow before your gods, Babylon. So what is Babylon? It means the gate of the gods, or Babel in Hebrew, meaning confusion, or to confuse. And they worship Ishtar, which is the goddess of heaven. You always wonder why there's a crown on everything? If you start looking at logos and products, and you're going to see this crown everywhere. And the goddess of heaven, the queen of heaven, uh, the secret societies consider Babylon as its birthplace and place of science and knowledge. And we see that science is real big over God. Science is the new religion, right? And they love to go into elevating and into knowledge. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. In the Jewish tradition, Babylon symbolizes, now get this, what it symbolizes, an oppressor, that righteous believers will struggle against. It's the force against righteousness. It's the evil, it's the wickedness of the world. New York Times article titled, The Return of Paganism. They're even declaring it themselves in December of 2018, or a pagan revival. And I think I do have a message on this I did three years ago, the pagan revival, revival of paganism. Well, it's true, it's, it's picking up speed. And unfortunately, it's knocking on our church doors. They're trying to, and they have been infiltrating many things. So you have to be really aware of what's going on, who you're listening to. Make sure you're not going into false ditches, false paths, because there's a whole bunch of mysterious religious that are coming together as one. 
and they think there's many paths to God. And if you're not strong in the Bible, you're going to be deceived in this hour. But if you know your Bible, you'll know this is coming. It's been prophesied. It's been warned. We have been warned. Uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah serve as symbols for end time paganism. In Jude 7, if you want to read about that, it says that there is this idolatry. And what is all of this paganism? It's liberation of sex. Everything goes. There is no morals. And mystical New Age spirituality. And again, these, these movements, these things, are knocking on our church doors, on our public education systems, our colleges. Everything is being infiltrated right now. But Jesus is our hope. And he's our hope because he told us these things. Yes. He told us these things would come. We didn't think it would happen in our generation. It's like a nightmare mm -hmm. that you can't wake up from. It's like, will this go away? It just, I'm just going to give you real crunched things here about some pagan beliefs that are, that are being revived. A reincarnation, that there's no hell. You hear a lot of these preachers now talking about there is no hell, don't preach on hell, just preach on love. And whenever they just preach on one, th one attribute of God, it's always occultic because there's different sides of God. God is also a God of judgment. And a lot of these preachers that preached on love, 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 they don't practice love themselves. I could tell you a lot of stories. But um, another paganism belief is they love the earth. There in Romans 1, it talks about they'll, they'll love the creature, creation more than the creator. And they worship Mother Gaia. And this is what we're going into now is loving of the earth more than people. Yep. It's putting the creation. Anything that's not sustainable is not going to happen. I've been warning you about the sustainable goals, the 17 sustainable goals, and they're horrifying. They really are. They want to take away... Uh, the fossil fuels, and all the different things that we've talked about for a few years now. But then they worship Baal, or Baal, whichever one you call it. But he's the god of life and fertility. Th they call him owner or lord, and they worship him. Now the Bible tells us we're not supposed to worship these things. There's only one god. But in the mystery religions, they have many gods. They have gods for everything. And it's to get what they want. And mostly it's money and prosperity. And remember the temptation of Jesus when the devil said, I'll give you this, fall down and worship me and I'll give you all these things. Yeah. Well, he said no, but a lot of people are saying yes yeah. because they want the material things of this world right. and they're living for now, right. their best life now. And then there's the worship of Moloch. And a lot of people think this has went away. This is not, it's just went underground. But it's even the veil is lifting from this. This is the human child sacrifice. The rulers of the shameful sacrifice is Moloch. Uh, offer their firstborn. And Leviticus 18.21 says, Do not hand any of your children to be worshipped, to be used in worship of the God of Moloch. So that was telling them that they were doing it. Yeah. And he's telling them, do not do it. Another pagan belief that we're going to get into is the pagan belief, the revival that's happening now in our cultures around the world is the androgyny. Now, this is a long-term goal. This has been going on for hundreds of years. This is not new, even though it's new to us, many of us. Uh, I, I did a message on this three years ago, I believe, and it didn't go over too well because people weren't ready for it. But guess what? It's happening anyway. Yeah. And now they're trying to present this to our children in school without the parents' consent. So this is the long-term goal of the merchants of the earth. You want to call them whatever you want, the kings of the earth. But it's about Satan's goal of destroying everything in creation, everything in creation the way God made it, including male and female. So even the natural foods, even the th everything, the, the, the meat, the every kind of thing that God made, they want to reverse it. They want to go to fake. They want to go, everything is, not, um, everything is not reality. They want to live in a metaverse and everything, everything is total confusion and it's meant to be that way. So the earth was filled with violence. And then even after the flood in Genesis 11, they had one language 
in one speech. But because they started, here they go again, they start doing all this evil, they start building the Tower of Babel. What did God do? He scattered them all over the earth and they, had diff they couldn't understand each other. He did that on purpose because they knew that they would get together again and then before the flood they'd start doing all this evil. And here again, it, but in verse 8 in Genesis 11, this really stuck out to me. Even though God scattered them, verse 8, they left off to build the city. They never stopped. Even though they had the flood and even though the evil was bad, the days of Noah were being built all over again. And now we're starting to see it. God did reset the earth. Yes. And now the devil wants to counterfeit. He wants to reset it. Think about that. He said, I will be like the Most High God. God did reset it. He caused a flood. He got rid of the evil. He even d repented that he made man because he was so evil. So Satan hates what uh, God natural order is on everything. And he wants them to approach him in a way that marks their rejection of that order. The mark of the beast. I don't think there's just one mark. I think this is... We've lived in a beast system, uh, the matrix. A lot of lies have gone on, and the more you study, the more you find out, and the more crazy th people think you are. Because <laughs> here's just like, I can't believe that. But as the Lord starts showing you things, you start seeing, and the puzzle comes together, and it all comes back to the revival of paganism. It all comes back to the gods they used to worship and how they never stopped, but they're gaining momentum, and they're trying to overtake things. So... Uh, the main thing is they want to reject the order of the way that God made man and woman. And the androgynes, now it's across the world. They believe that there's a third gender uh, other than male and female. Now, when I taught this three years ago, people really didn't, it didn't like, huh? But now we're seeing it more and more. And look no further than Miley Cyrus. She started off as Hannah Montana as a sweet, innocent little doll girl. And the last picture I saw, I won't even tell you what I saw, but she was just f putting things on her, strapping male parts on her, running around the stage, saying she's uh, gender fluid and all these different things. And s this is what they use these movie stars for, is to program society. So we don't follow them. <laughs> but unfortunately, a lot of the kids do. Uh, this third gender does not emerge of itself, but it must be consciously chosen or reassigned. So many cultures worship gods that are androgynous. Ishtar, god of the heavens, was an androgynous. And they worship these gods and they want to become like them. So they believe that they need to be male and female in one body. This is the old mystery religions, how the mark on them is to basically say, we don't want anything to do with this God and how he made us, we're going to be made in another image. So they mark themselves. I mean, just think about that statement. This process of feminization and emasculation are believed to give them occult powers, yeah. eternal life, and they'll finally be whole. So they're doing it for a purpose, to evolve. They exercise the power of dip. Now, I just want to say, you got to start listening to my messages right away when they come out at Friday night or Saturday because I get shadow banned like after the third day. This has been going on now for a couple years because they don't like all this truth coming out. They exercise the power of divination by dressing in women's clothing. Now, in Deuteronomy 22.5, the man shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Well, that's usually one of the first initiations is to do that. Yeah. They have to wear the opposite and be the opposite. This is part of, this is part of it. But God knew about this. He's not surprised. He, this is not new. It might be new to a lot of us, but this has been going on for a long time. That's why he put that in there not to wear that which pertaineth unto the opposite sex. Now, we're not talking about just wearing jeans or something like that. We're talking about specifically, now, if you look at some of these um, models and stuff, they're dressing in the opposite sex. Yeah. The men are wearing full-blown uh, 
gowns and I mean, we never s saw this until a few years ago it started to come out, but this is part of it. Uh, and back into ancient Babylon, androgyny blends the opposites and they want no boundaries. They basically want to be whoever they want to be. They don't want any boundaries. They don't want restrictions. And male and female merge into a marital union. And they go back to, they say that God made Adam and Eve as one. They were named Adam. So they believed that Adam was two-faced. They were joined at the back, but they had two faces, the male and the female. And because of the fall, they split off from each other. I know, I know. <laughs> So to get back to their beliefs, they believe they have to combine those sexes into one body. So many times they're uh, turned, even at youth, the, the heavy, heavy, high movie star people with lots of money, they, they I don't want to say certain words to get bumped off here, but they, they change them at birth, they change them through hormones, through surgery. This is part of their religion. <coughs> and they believe it's their path to eternal life. Yes. And that they'll have more powers, they'll be blessed with material things. Oh yeah, and they eventually go back to godhood. So this is all part of ancient Babylon. This is part of the harlot church. This is all part of things that are prophesied in the book of Revelation. All these things that are so dark, it's really hard to see. And why are we talking about this? To protect our children. Yeah. Because if they are educated and they're trained of what's happening to them, they won't be confused and they won't fall into all of this confusion of, of who they are and what we need, you know. Just think, when we were going through school, we didn't have to fight this stuff. I mean, we had enough stuff to deal with, but nothing like this, yeah. nothing like what they're fighting now. But these mystics believe all conflict can be resolved by blending opposites. The yin and the yang, the good and the bad the male and the female, everything is one. Everything is a part of one. Uh, very important in the occult is this is a sign of oneness uh, turned his back on God to find a new path. This is their path. And they want to take, and the devil wants to take as many people down this path. But the, uh, the goal of the, this ancient celebration of androgyny is, and it still is, to blur and eventually obliterate the clear distinctions between male and female genders and characteristics to merge genders as the norm. Think of what it's going to be like in 10 years from now if the Lord doesn't tarry. Uh, to be dualistic and to transcend perfection of the union of opposites. The boy, girl, or he, she, fluid gender is raised to a divine status. So the male and female can celebrate diversity and oneness. They say God's Adam was not male or female, but genderless in the garden. And according to the ancient mystics, mankind must return in order to achieve perfection on earth, to return to completeness. Now these people believe this. Yes. They have been indoctrinated and believe this. The oral traditions, all these different things that have passed down. They claim the first man was created, I'm going to say it again, as both male and female, but later separated into two creatures, Adam and Eve, and they were split. So they were, there was two, you know, they, they went in their opposite directions. That was the fall. But to come back to completeness, they have to come together again. So they believe that God is androgynous and that so are they. They need to be to re ascend into divine consciousness. This is the teaching of androgyny. Uh, another thing I thought was interesting, yoga, Ida channel, femininity, and Pigala channel, masculinity, combine together to become one with the universal spirit. This is the teaching of androgyny. A lot of people are practicing this, they have no idea. This is part of the religion. Actually, that word um, and aner is male and jine, female, also called the third gender. Our gender is undefined. And the unicorn, we see unicorn everywhere. And the kids are really into this unicorn. It's an androgyny symbol. It means male, female into one. 
and the horn growing out of the head of the unicorn represents the third eye or the all-seeing eye. So that's not just a cute little innocent thing that a lot of people think. There's symbolism happening everywhere. Speaking of symbolism, we did some uh, teachings in 2015, 2016, and I did the Fleur de Lis symbol. I just want to tell you, I was into fashion merchant. That was my first degree. I was into fashion, blah, blah, blah. Well, then I f started some st uh, studying symbolism, and I found out that that symbol is related to the occult or the mystery schools or whatever it is. So we got most of those down. We have four left, I think. We're trying to blur them out. The, the messages are good, but because we were into the Florida Lee symbol, um, that does not represent who we are today. That was back in 2016. So we're trying to solve that. I think we've got four. One was um, narcissism and Christianity. That one had a lot of views. They let some of my earlier ones go a lot, and that was one of them. But we're looking at, if so either listen to those early ones, uh, give us suggestions, or we're just going to take those down eventually if we can't fix it. <coughs> uh, the goal of this ancient celebration of androgyny is to blur the distinctions between male and female. Now, you have to understand they use Hollywood to do this. Yeah. And they've been using this. They've been uh, mystery, what do I call it, secretly uh, doing this with our movie stars for years. <clears throat> when I started seeing this, it was really hard to take. It was just like, just when you think you've seen it all. <laughs> oh boy, this is a... Uh... Wow, yeah. So I think I'm done with that page, okay. So this is hidden to the message masses but it's open to the initiated and the illuminated and that's why a lot of times you'll see the movie stars go shh they have a secret well this is their secret and you're not supposed to know unless you're part of it god made man in two distinct genders to replenish the earth yeah. well the enemy wants this new generation to be sterilized yes. i'm sure you've heard of this uh they're going to tell, uh, they, they think there's too many people on the earth, depopulation. And they're going into some pretty drastic measures from the things I've read. And there's a lot of things I've read into the future that, I mean, I, I read about this, about the stoves and the wood, for, they want to take away the wood burning stoves and all this stuff, all this. Uh, I didn't think it would happen so fast. But last week, some more things are coming out about they want you to get rid of your gas stoves, right? Well, this is all an agenda. These are all agendas. And this is all about, not it's not about us, it's about really getting rid of people and forcing them, force is a word, forcing them into new habits, forcing them to things. And a lot of the freedoms and liberty we've had, if you, if you follow the sustainable goals, they'll say everything that we're doing is unsustainable. So we have to stop it. And Unfortunately, there's a lot of people in on this, and a lot of rules and laws have been and are being passed. So we have to, you know, gear up, put our armor on, see what's going on, be prepared, be ready, understand we're in a spiritual battle. And for so long, we were taught Christianity is just so fun, and everybody wants to be a part, and here we were sleeping. Well, they were passing these laws, doing all these things. All of us Christians were in this little bubble of being blessed and, you know, falling out under the power and going to heaven and all these crazy things. And here the enemy's been working behind the curtains to really trying to bring a destruction to man, mankind. But God's going to have his way. And we trust the Lord that he keeps us, he protects us like he has that we walk with him, we found favor in his sight because we walk with him just like Noah did. So the ancient practice of the mystery religions are being reborn as modern cultural agents of changing and transforming society. They have change agents. They have people that they raise up and don't follow men. The Bible says in, in the end time, take heed that you follow no man because you'll be deceived. And these people that are following these sports people and all that, you have to know they're all part of the club. How, mu how many millions do you make? Okay, so if you, if you have questions, look no further than Bruce Jenner and Miley Cyrus. What happened? Let me just say a little bit. 
back here, it was at 2015, uh, Bruce Jenner, who's now changed, we know, is a planned event meant to support an ongoing agenda. Why was this massively celebrated around the world, basically? Because it was a grand ceremonial rit ritualistic event that symbolizes a change in society as a whole. This wasn't just a man doing something. This was an agenda. An important part of the elite's agenda is to debase, confuse, and mix up the natural, harmonious order of things. It's about steering away from what is real, pure, and authentic to move towards what is fake, artificial, and the constructed. For this reason, uh, their agenda is becoming very apparent now. We're starting to see, and nobody knows how to fight back. It's just like it's been growing in momentum. And now it's just accepted and celebrated by all. The feminization of the male and the masculinization of the female under the guise of empowerment, men who act like females and females who, come on, if you're watching TV, you see somebody, you, that is not a woman. I'm sorry, but that is not. It, fool me once, fool me twice, but hey, wh wh they're looking like aliens out there. I'm like, what in the world? And they're saying, oh, I won't go. Oh, there's just so much going on. Open your eyes. You're seeing the third gender on TV. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. <clears throat> um, now natural men are seen as wrong. All of a sudden, portraying a stay-at-home mom who likes pride in cooking and her family is considered sexist. In other words, it's about a complete reversal of gender roles. Now in commercials, you don't see a mother with her baby. You see a dad with the baby. You see everything's changed. The woman is in charge of every movie. She's telling those guys what to do. She's the boss. But this was all planned. This was all planned. Can you handle a little more? Uh, It's also called gender fluidity. You, th you think of some of these movie stars and how they're changing their children. This is all part of it. Uh, gender fluid has to, it has no rules. Uh, no rules of gender, multiple genders or no gender. It can change over time. And uh, I'm a woman today and I'm a man tomorrow. This is all paganistic. This is all back to reversing the order of God. Unicorn, again, is a symbol that means male and female into one. Um, I'm not going to go into that. Barbara Marks Hubbard, her spirit guide says, okay, if anyone has a spirit guide, you know that's where that is, that sexual identity confusion is a good thing. In the new age, your adolescence will be a joy. You will be androgynous. This is their plan, that your kids will be androgynous. This was a quote from her, Barbara Marks Hubbard, let me say it again. Spirit Guide says that sexual identity confusion is a good thing. In the new age, this is all new age, this is all the one world, this is where they're going with their mass confusion, their mass, everything against God. Can you believe we're living in this? Sometimes it's just like, wake up, wake up. Oh, it's still here. Uh, the adolescence will be a joy, you will be androgynous. Distinctions disappear and opposites are joined. And now they have different names to call them. Don't call me this, don't call me that. All these, even from 1984, that book, uh, a lot of that is like a script that's being followed. Um, you can't just be a male or female to gain access into immortal life. You have to change. Yep. And part of their religion, you have to change. If you're born one, you have to change so that way you make it into eternal life. Aren't you glad that it's not that hard? You accept Jesus, <laughs> and he's done all the work. You accept him, and you obey him, and you walk and live for him. These people in other religions, there's a lot of work they got to go through. And then midlife, these people have to have more and more surgeries because the X and the Y chromosome come out. If you're born one way, yeah. if you're trying to be... Uh, uh, if you're a man and you change into a woman, which a lot of them are doing on TV, um, they have to, all of a sudden they disappear and they have more surgeries. Why? Because that chromosome is showing. You can't erase 
that part of the male or the female. And so the, uh, just look at Jane Russell. Just look at her. The before and when she died, the difference. The maleness has come. Oh, yeah. So it's been happening from that far way back. Sorry to break up all your lusting after these people. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that was the hot, hot chick of the day back there in my dad's day. <clears throat> this is the Gnostics' understanding of salvation. They believe they have to do this to be saved. Yeah. Yeah. True. Almost done. I know this is hard to take. The Gnostics, in the Gospel of Thomas, and I've shared this before, there's different Gospels. We don't believe in these Gospels of Thomas, the Gospel of different guys. Uh, they're Gnostics. And what, what Simon Peter, here's a quote from the Gnostic Bible of Thomas, and it's Gnostic. This is what a lot has happened in our churches, too. The Gnostics have come in and overtaken it. It's always been a battle. But Simon Peter said to them, Let Mary go away from us, for women are not worthy of life. And this, their Jesus said, Lo, I, am, I shall lead her, so that I may mark her a male, that she too may become a living spirit, resembling you males. For every woman who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. This is their belief. This is their Bible. This is how they believe that um, you have to change. The Gospel of Thomas is driven by the androgynous pagan ideal which is promised not to experience death. So this is their way to eternal life. Yeah. I kind of like the Bible's way of life. <laughs> it's, Oh, it's a lot less work. And lot. So the key, the road to salvation, the mystical attainment or sexless state, the sexless state, which is the androgynous state. Yeah. So here we're having a revival mm -hmm. of paganism. <sighs> we're seeing so many different things. And if you knew your Old Testament, you can say, that is not new. Mm -hmm. That is not new. It's coming up maybe a different name. But if you look up, Ishtar, just put in Ishtar. You see, it was in the Bible. Look up Molech. You see, it's in the Bible. You see, they did sacrifices. They sacrificed sometimes their firstborn to become uh, honored with the gods. Yep. And they still do ritualistic sacrifices now with certain celebrities and different things. and diff They're all into these numbers and all that stuff. I don't get into a whole lot of it, but I know what's going on. And if you know what's going on, you won't be deceived by it. Father, we're encouraged that you told us these things so that we wouldn't freak out when we see these things happening really in our newspapers, our televisions. Things are just happening so fast. But you said, as the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. And also the days of Lot. And we know that Lot was all about Sodom and Gomorrah. We know all these different things. So Father, we know you have a hand on us to see these things to help us not be afraid to share these things because we know there is going to be a time we're not allowed our first amendment rights are going fast so father i thank you for those that are helping me get these words out now while we still can even though we're shadow banned that the people will hear us the right people will find us and we give you all the praise and the glory that the word of god is not bound and it shall be preached to the ends of the earth so, Father, we thank you for your will to be done in all of our lives, that we will not be deceived by this revival of paganism. In Jesus' name. If you would like to see more messages from Roberta on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to her YouTube channel, Roberta Morrison, and also her backup channel, Roberta Morrison 2. Hit the bell button to be notified of new messages from her. Be sure to check out her YouTube playlist for other messages that interest you. Go to the livinginhispresence.org webpage and click on the top center to go see her messages. There are free audio downloads of the messages available also. We are viewer supported. On the main webpage at the top right is a give button. Thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>